I came here with, a, with the idea to help uh, our networks of investigative journalists in the Balkans, in Eastern Europe, and also other parts of the world. And uh, uh, the investigative dashboard is a, is a tool, basically. Because uh, the problem we have in the Balkans, we have all these networks, and uh, we have people working together on investigative projects, investigating, for instance, trafficking in human beings or investigating organized crime. But we always got stuck at some point because we don't have access to information, first of all. And uh, then sometimes we don't have tool to, um, to deal with this information or to get new information. So the idea behind the investigative dashboard was that we'd provide a place, uh, be it a website or be it a piece of software, that would enable uh, guys in our network, journeys in, in the Balkans and elsewhere, uh, to have access to new tools and to to use the new uh, advancements in the, uh, I don't know, the software industry. What I tried to do was to, uh, to only use open source software. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to have this website where people, mm -hmm. so this would be a one-stop shop for mm -hmm. investigative journalists, you know, mm -hmm. all the tools they need in order to follow the money across borders. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we want to do with the investigative dashboard, well, I call it the ID, it's um, we want to hire researchers. It's in a sense what you used to have here, you know, the research desk at newspapers. Right. I know that lots of newspapers got rid of that right. research desk. And so it's going to be a research desk for the global movement mm. so that people in this global investigative journalist network, you know, uh, are going to know that you, you go to the, to the investigative dashboard and you can yourself have access to all these 